Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, today is Friday. Praise God. I just bless God. Yesterday was awesome. And God is not done. God is not done. He's restoring your time. Hallelujah. He's restoring your time. You know, sometimes some things are just very difficult to believe or to understand. Thank you, Lord Jesus. See, see, the Lord is showing me things again that he's doing right now. Ah, yeah, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right, let's call for that daily bread. Are you ready? Are you ready? Join me, say, Father, I receive right now. My daily bread is coming to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, praise God. I've got to say this. I'm seeing a lady. You are about 45 years old. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, you are about 45 years old. You are unmarried. I see 45. You're unmarried. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, someone is about to get married to you. But the fear is if you're going to have children, if you're going to be able to have children. Now, can I tell you what the Lord is saying to you? <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can I tell you what the Lord is saying to me? Now, I've never heard this before, but I believe God. Yes, I believe Him. I see God rewinding your age. I see God rewinding your age. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I see seven. I see God rewinding your age seven years backwards. Now, as I'm saying what I'm saying to you, I don't even understand what I'm saying. But I'm speaking as I'm hearing from the Lord, as I'm seeing. Because, you see, sometimes the way this thing works is we see and then sometimes we hear. Okay? And sometimes they come together. And, and sometimes there's no time for explanations. But So, we just try to describe what we are perceiving and seeing. Okay, so I, I, I saw this lady who's 45 years old. I saw her age being reduced by seven years. Now, I'm not saying go and carry pen and reduce your age. I'm talking about the metabolisms of your body. So you are going to notice that the things you're supposed to experience at 45, you're going to experience it seven years later. Yes, well, the person I'm talking to is 45 years old. You are, I think someone is interested in getting married to you, this particular person. Someone is interested in getting married to you, but this is the fear that is in your heart. This is a fear that is in your heart that would you have, would you be able to have children? That's the fear that's in your heart. Now, I hear the Lord and I'm seeing number seven and I'm seeing time going backwards. So I, I, I can say to you that the Lord is moving your years, seven years backwards. You will have your children. Praise God, don't be afraid. Go ahead. Go ahead, get married with joy and be truthful. Be truthful. Be truthful. God is going to give it to you. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Whoa, 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 whoa. Lord, you are just wonderful. You are just wonderful. Isn't this amazing? There are some things I'm seeing that they, they just, just look crazy. You know what I mean? Crazy. <laughs> I don't know what miracle you're desiring right now. Some things are just funny, honestly. Ah, so, I'm seeing someone who has white you know, you're already developing gray hair. Uh, and somehow you're uncomfortable with it. I don't know why. But I see it turning. I see your hair growing. Now, I'm not, you didn't go to dye it or anything. I just see it turning black again. Now I'm just wondering, Lord, what's going on? <laughs> it's good. What's going on? Maybe it's your request. We're not crazy. I'm, these, are, these, are, these are things of the Spirit. Maybe it's your request to receive your answer from the Lord. And you know, sometimes the kind of things God does, you, you would think 
Somebody out there is struggling to pay house rent. God is not answering. It's somebody that wants his head to turn black that God is answering. It's the mercy of God. It's the mercy of God. It's the mercy of God. So instead of you wondering at another, why don't you just simply ask him your own father, okay, this is what I want. And ask him for what is right. Ask him for what is right. I see a family being restored. A family being restored. Uh, there are children in that family, but there was a separation or there was maybe a divorce or, or something. But I see, I see that family coming back together. You know, sometimes these things are done by manipulation. See, because we're talking about light, we're talking about the, the stars, we're talking about these things. Like I told you, I don't want to bore you into all those. You know, there are people who preach this message and they begin to tell you how um, occultic people tamper with people's destinies and all that. That's not where I'm going. I'm telling the truth concerning these things. All the lights, they carry a sign in them and the sign in them is is for God showing the sign and token of God's providence care. Okay? Now, you, you, you remember Job when, when Job got sick and he began to curse the day he was born. You remember? I mean, he, he said, Job made a statement. He said, let those that curse the days, curse that particular day that I was born. The day is past. Now, Job was not just speaking out of frustration. Job was speaking wrong words, but from the place of deep understanding. You remember he said, I remember the days in my, in my younger days when I carried um, the tabernacle of God in my bosom. So Job was saying, I, I, I have carried truth. I, I, I know truth. Job was not just a businessman. He was a man with depth. So when he began to curse that day, he knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. And that's the reason when God began to reply him, God started asking him some deep questions. And, and those questions, they, they may not make meaning to you. But God was talking to a man who he had revealed things to, okay? Oh, let me, let, 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 let's, let's look at Job. Let's just toy with this thing. A bit. Thank you, Jesus. Job, brother Job. Shala bada gar to the bread dish ken the dushka. Now I go para. Hmm. Let me start from verse 40, chapter 40. Okay, let me start from verse 38. Yeah, verse, from verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the wild wind. Now you remember, you remember Elijah one time was in a cave and then he was waiting for God. And then the Bible said, and there was a wild wind, but the Lord was not in the wild wind. And then there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And then there was a, then finally the Lord showed up in a still small voice. Okay. And if you've heard me talk about that, I said, why was Elijah waiting when he saw the wild wind? Why was he expecting God about the wild wind? Because God had come by a wild wind before. Why was he expecting God when he saw an earthquake? Because God had come by an earthquake before. Now you see here God dealing with Job. Please follow me now. It says, then the Lord answered Job out of the wild wind and said. So physically speaking, there was a wild wind that showed up. Okay. And then God was in it. See? Yes, God was in it. And God began to speak. Say, who is 
dark, who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Uh, yeah. When God begins to talk like this, you've touched him. <laughs> Guard up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. <laughs> like that now. He says, get up like a man, let's talk. Now, God will not come to you. you just there. I don't know what's happening to you. He won't come. He's talking to a man whom he has revealed depths to. Oh, my <laughs> God. He said, when, he said, where was thou when I laid the foundation of the earth? <laughs> Declare, if thou hast understanding, who had laid the measure, who had laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest, or who had stretched the lines upon them, who measured the earth? He said, tell me if you know. <laughs> so, no matter what God reveals to you, there are aspects he can't even reveal to you. <laughs> mm. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Now God is telling you that this city earth that you see is fastened. It's, it's not just hovering. It's tied. It's fixed. It has a foundation. But you don't see it. <laughs> Whereupon are the foundation fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth as if it had issued out of the womb? Do you know? He said, when I made the clouds, the garments thereof, and take darkness, a swaddling band for it, and break up for its break up for its my decreed place and set bars and doors and said he that thou shalt come but no further and here shall thy proud waves be stayed he said has thou commanded the morning since thy day and caused the day spring to know its place that it might take hold of the ends of the earth that the wicked might be shaken out of it. God is saying some deep things here. It is turned as clay to the seal and they stand as a garment. And from the wicked, their light is withholding. And the high arm shall be broken has thou entered into the springs of the sea or has thou walked in the search of the depths have the gates of death been opened unto thee or has thou seen the doors of the shadow of death the things God was saying to Job here. has thou perceived the breath of the earth declare if thou knowest it all Talk. Where is the way where light dwelleth? And as for darkness, where is the place of it? Where does light dwell? You see it come. Where does it go? Do you know? That thou shouldest take it to the bound thereof, and that thou sh and that thou shouldest know the path to the house thereof. Knowest thou it because thou was knowest thou it because thou was then born, or because the number of thy days is great? Has thou entered into the treasure of the snow? Or hast thou seen the treasures of the hill, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? <laughs> Look at the questions God was asking Job. <laughs> he said, Do you know the treasure of the snow? Or has thou seen the treasure of the hill? These are God's armory. Do you know where it is? God has an armory. 
saya. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He said, which verse 23, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war. So there is a day, God knows that there is a day of battle and war. He has an armory. He has reserved weapons there. Yeah. By what way is the light parted, which scattered the east wind against the earth? Who has divided a water course for the overflowing of water? or a way for the lightnings and thunder to cause it to rain on the earth where no man is, on the wilderness wherein there is no man, to satisfy the desolate and the waste ground, and to cause the bud of the tender herb to spring forth. Has the rain a father? Or who had begotten the drops of dews? Or who had, or of out of whose womb came the ice or the hoary frost, of heaven who had gardened who had gardened it what was god saying to job you don't know nothing he just pointed out a few things job do you know this one you're boasting because because you know job was like i see i know god don't tell me all these things you guys are telling me job understood that his challenge came from god you know all this you know, sometimes we heard all those things. And, oh, it was Job's confession that caused his trouble. No, it wasn't his confession that caused his trouble. It was his lack of understanding that caused his trouble. God actually wanted to show Job mercy, but Job would not receive the mercy of God. He was a rich man. You know, that's why Jesus said, how hard it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. See, Job was rich, being blessed and prospered by God, okay? But that was not enough for God because, see, when a man has money and has truth, it's a very dangerous man. Very dangerous man. If a man has money and truth, it's very dangerous. So, what God does to such a man. I say money and truth. Job had them. So what God does to such a man is to bring him to a place where he would replace the money with true riches. How did he get the money before? Now by doing normal business and God, God's hand resting upon it. But he's saying, because of the element of truth in that man's life, is his 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 God is endeared, I mean, or rather, he's endeared to God. So God looks at this man just like he was looking at Job. Said, Job, I want to give you true riches. But for me to give you true riches, you must show something to me that you are completely dependent on me. He said, You cannot get true riches by business. Never. Never. True riches higher is a kind that everybody will be looking for where your money is and they will never find it. That's true riches. But for you to enter into, into true riches, you have to let go of the riches, physical riches that God has given to you. Now that's what God began to instruct Job to do, but Job couldn't obey God. Why? Just like Jesus said, how hard it is for a rich man to enter into God's, God's kingdom. So God wanted to bring Job into his kingdom of wealth. But Job was finding it difficult to give up what he had. That was what happened to Job. And so, because God was already in covenant with Job by the level of truth that Job carried, God had to do it by force. And how did God do it by force? He introduced Satan into the equation. It was God that said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? God actually wanted Satan to take out everything that Job has. 
Now, taking out everything Job has was not enough. Job had to come to that place of giving the thing. See? So, Job had to come to the place of acceptance that, okay, I release these things as a seed. Jesus said, give to every man that asks you, and from anyone who takes away your good, don't ask him back. So even though God took everything Job had by force, by getting Satan involved in it, you know the story. God still waited for Job to willingly let go. It was when Job willingly let go in his mind that God brought about a restoration. Now the restoration God brought about for Job was now true riches. That's another day's talk. Praise God. There's so much mercy, so much mercy. And you're entering a season where the manifestation of God's mercy will be so great in your life. Receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Receive the mercy of God right now. In the area of restoration, receive the mercy of God right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Have a lovely weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.